Hello everyone, GameShark here and welcome back to another video. Today I am going to show you my very own Skull Cavern Guide in Stardew Valley. This guide is to help you people out who are struggling with them Skull Caverns. Things such as progressing far down to the deep levels, fighting the tough enemies, finding the Iridium and other rare items, and just some general tips and tricks to help you master the Skull Cavern and make your time down there easier and more enjoyable. This may be a long video as it is going to be very, very detailed and structured, telling you everything you need to know. So sit back, relax and listen up. But first, let me tell you some information about the Skull Cavern and give you an idea on how this mine works. The Skull Cavern is located in the desert area which you will need the bus to be repaired to get over there. It is initially locked and requires the Skull Key to gain access. You can get this key by reaching the bottom floor of the original mine. There is an infinite number of floors or levels in the Skull Cavern. Similar to the mines, you can advance through floors by finding a ladder on each floor, either by mining rocks or defeating enemies, but you can also sometimes find a shaft or a hole, which makes it possible to skip 3 to 15 floors at a single time, but dropping down these shafts will cause a small amount of damage. Unlike the mines, there is no elevator to save progress, each visit must start again from the very first floor. Every 10 floors you process down, the chance to find Iridium Ore will increase significantly. The monsters in the cavern also have a chance to drop ore and Iridium Bars. Exploring the cavern with good luck will increase the frequency of ore veins, item drops and the appearance of ladders and holes. Ok, so now you know some general information about the Skull Cavern, let's get straight into the preparation and things you'll need and want before and during your time down there. Before you even hesitate to take a trip to the Skull Cavern, you are going to want to make sure your mining and combat skill levels are high. The reason for this is simple. The higher your level of these skills, the stronger and more efficient you are down there. Getting a high level in mining isn't really a must, this will just help you find more gems and ores and also increase their value depending on what profession you choose, which makes your time down there more worthwhile. But having your combat skill level high or maxed out before the Skull Cavern is very, very important. Reaching level 5 and 10 in the combat skill will allow you to choose a special profession. For example, if you reach level 10 in combat, you get the option to be a scout or a fighter. If you choose the fighter, you can pick either the brute profession or the defender profession. Brute making you deal more damage against enemies or the defender giving you more HP. And if you choose to be the scout, you get to pick either the acrobat or the desperado profession, making your critical strikes deadly against enemies or cooling down your special moves. These skill professions are so important to have against the monsters down there. There is no best profession to choose from, it is all down to your preference and your playstyle. Are you an attacking person or a defending person? Okay, so I'm going to tell you guys what you are going to be facing and what you are up against in the school cavern. Firstly, the big and main problem is the time. Of course time is on your side, just like it is all over the game, but it's more of a problem in the school cavern because your progress does not save with having no elevator and you need to start from level 1 every time you enter. And the deeper mines are the floors you want to be on for the big rare items, so to fight the time you need to be fast. Don't take your time in the mines, don't hit every single rock in sight and collect everything you see and even fight every enemy. Just focus on finding them stairs to get to the deeper floors and then you can take your time. Using anything with a speed boost will help, but I will be going through the best things for speed later in this video so stay tuned. But another thing you're facing are the enemies of course. The main monsters that are in the school caverns and the most powerful that you need to look out for are the mummies and the serpents. Mummies have 260 HP and deal a big 30 damage. 
but you can't kill these enemies with just a sword. They need to be finished with any type of explosion after being knocked down with a weapon. And the serpents are the biggest problem down the cavern that I find. These are very, very fast monsters as they are flying. They have 150 HP and deal 23 damage, but it is their speed that is deadly. So using a fast weapon with big speed and good knockback is required for these monsters. There will be some other monsters you'll bump into as well, such as slimes and bats, but they're the least of your worries. Now let's talk about health and energy, things you'll need to keep you alive. Firstly, you want to try and focus on collecting as much or if not all of the star drops. A star drop is a special item that permanently increases your maximum energy by 34 points. There are a total of 7 to find, obtaining them many ways from the Stardew Valley Fair, the treasure chest on the floor wandering in the mines, to getting one from your spouse when you're at full hearts. There is other ways to get them, but I won't be going through that on this video. Going to the school cavern with a lot of stamina will be very handy, but not as important as food and health. You will be up against some strong and fast enemies and you will deal and take big amounts of damage, so replenishing your health is a must in the school cavern. And I have got a few recipes and meals that I'd recommend to take with you to help you with this problem. The first one being the roots platter. You will unlock this recipe at combat level 3, and the ingredients are 1 cave carrot and 1 winter root. A very easy dish to make. The roots platter will give you 125 energy and 56 health once consumed. Now, this meal isn't that useful for health regain, but it will give you a bonus plus free attack against enemies for a duration of 5 minutes and 35 seconds, making you deadly against enemies. The next meal you should take with you is the pumpkin soup. This recipe will be unlocked and sent in the mail by Robin once you are 7 hearts with her. And all you need is 1 pumpkin and 1 milk to cook this recipe. This meal will replenish 200 energy and 90 health at a time. But the most important thing about this meal is that it will give you a plus 2 luck and a plus 2 defence for a 7 minute duration, which is perfect for protection and a higher chance to find rare items. The last cooking dish, and in my opinion the best one to take with you, I do it all the time, it is the crab cakes. Now you can find this recipe on the cooking channel in full, you'll need one crab, one wheat flour, one egg and one oil to make it. A bit more tricky to cook, but this will replenish 225 energy and 101 health once consumed, which is brilliant if you have a few of these with you. But also crab cakes give you a plus one speed boost and a plus one defense boost for a duration of 16 minutes and 47 seconds, which is so important at avoiding and defending yourself against the enemies. So we have covered what you'll need for boosting health, but now let's talk about protection from helping you not lose health. Firstly, you need to think about armour, things like boots and rings. These are both important as wearing both of these clothing items will give you benefits such as defence and immunity from the monsters. The best boots you can get in the game and definitely a must have item with you are the space boots. These can be found from a chest on the level 110 floor in the basic mines. Space boots will give a plus 4 defence and a plus 4 immunity from all enemies which will protect you massively. And the best ring to wear whilst down the school cavern are the Iridium Bands. You can craft these yourself once reaching level 9 combat, another reason why the combat skill is important. Or you can find them by fishing for treasure chests. Iridium Bands will give you light from the glow, it will attract items like a magnet and also give you 10% more attack damage. Amazing right? But you can actually wear two of these bands at a time, doubling your attack by 20% and giving you a bigger glow and a bigger magnet area. I would definitely recommend to have two of these rings to help you down the school cavern mines. 
Now let's talk about weapons. What will you need to fight these powerful enemies? Well, the best sword in the game is of course the Galaxy Sword, dealing 60 to 80 damage with a 0.2% critical hit chance and an amazing plus 4 weapon speed boost, perfect against the serpents. You can either buy this for 50,000 gold in the Adventures Guild or exchange a prismatic shard and place it under the three pillars in the desert. But if you do not have this weapon, you can also take the Lava Katana, which can be found once reaching the bottom of the normal mines. Now this weapon won't give you as much damage, but it will give you more critical power and a defense boost, perfect against the slimes. Also, surprisingly, using slingshots is a great way to fight enemies too. Using explosive ammo is very effective against mummies, killing them for good. But if you use gold ore for ammunition, this will deal substantial amounts of damage against all strong enemies. Try it yourself. Okay, so on to the speed topic. Like I said, this is very important down the school cavern. You need to progress down the floors as fast as possible. Also, avoiding the enemies as much as you can. If necessary, don't fight them. Run and avoid them. To help with the speed boost, take a lot of coffee with you. Easy to produce and giving you a good plus one speed boost for a few minutes. You can also use the speed boost from a cooking meal at the same time as the coffee boost, giving you an even bigger speed boost. One other thing you can do to progress faster is use explosives. You can craft these or buy them from the dwarf. These will destroy enemies easily and also destroy rocks and stones in your path, making you find ladders and shafts a lot faster. But also, easily finding you lots of resources, such as iridium ore. To gather these items quickly, use ring magnets to collect them. Instead of walking to each item, the magnet ring will attract and collect them up whilst you are running. But the main important thing to do for speed and faster progression is to craft staircases to get down to the lower floors. Staircases can be used for rapid descent or skipping troublesome floors. Since staircases do not stack, it can be more space efficient to bring plenty of stone and craft the staircases as you need them. By doing this you can easily get to level 300 plus in one full day. So fill out your backpack with stone and find your own ladders. Okay finally, one last thing to do down the school cavern. If you find yourself in big big trouble, either the time is really late and the day is nearly over, or your health and energy drops to near death point and you need to make a quick exit, then use warp totems or your return scepter to get home as fast as possible to avoid this emergency. You can craft warp totems yourself or purchase them from the casino, but bring some of these with you, it will be better than dying and losing items and money. Okay, so that comes to the end of this video guys. My very own personal school cavern guide, which I go by every single time, and it's the most efficient way I have found to master the school cavern and progress a lot further. I've experimented with this many times and it has always worked. I hope that this guide has helped you in some way. Maybe you didn't know some of these tips and you got some useful ideas to help you, but if you already knew most of these points already, then, well, maybe I guess this video wasn't for you. But either way, if you enjoyed it, please press that lovely like button and leave me some nice feedback in the comments below. And if you are new around here and you want to see more guides and tips for this game, please subscribe to see more. But until then, I will see you beautiful people on the next one. Stay safe, stay awesome and peace.